American Synanon has been growing for several years. Diederich seems to have changed and changed the organization as well. Terry Drinkwater has a background report. When Diederich founded Synanon in the late 1950s, the organization was hailed as a constructive, self-help, drug and alcohol rehabilitation center. Group dynamics, discipline, and the force of Diederich's personality brought sobriety and successful withdrawal from heroin and other drugs to hundreds of followers. Synanon grew, eventually becoming a $20 million business, supported through its own profit-making farms and small industries, and by generous contributions. With success came others, middle-class people, professionals, non-alcoholics, non-addicts, who simply sought a different way of life. They found it in Synanon. Diederich, many former members now say, changed too, becoming more authoritarian. He ordered that all male members undergo vasectomies, that women and men shave their heads, that members change partners, swap them for new mates. Last winter, Diederich claimed an unflattering article in Time magazine had provoked threats on his own life. We never start anything. We never do and never had. But nobody is going to mess with us nobody many of those members of synodon who left around that time say the organization was changing radically we talked with a man today who was part of synodon for 13 years i believe that it's become a non uh, gone away from its non-violent principles and become an organization that will use violence and what of diederich what kind of a man is he he was the force behind Synodon. He was uh, an executive in the Gulf Oil Corporation who became an alcoholic, a great salesman, a very fine manipulator of, uh, of ideas and people. Do you think that Dietrich would be capable of leading a mass suicide within Synodon? I don't know, but I think that he could lead people anywhere that he wanted to. I think he's that forceful a human being. Terry Drinkwater, CBS News, Los Angeles. Candeia Solima, Candeia Solima, Candeia Solima, Aluê, Candeia Solima, Candeia Solima, Candeia Solima, Candeia Solima, Aluê, Candeia Solima. The sun is sky and sea, the sun is sky and sea, the sun is sky and sea, I know I'm gonna see. The sun is sky and sea, oh, the sun is sky and sea, the sun is sky and sea, I'll I know I'm gonna see. on the surface, gray and forbidding, but in a special sense, unique. For here, prison authorities have allowed inside the walls members of Synanon, an organization of former narcotic addicts who believe they can help criminals as they have helped themselves, help them with an unusual type of therapy. It's wrong? What's wrong about it? 
What do you mean you? What, 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 what about you is wrong about it? <laughs> you all happy? <laughs> well, Frank, nobody's happy or laughing at you, man. We're trying to get you to, 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 to come up with some kind of feeling. I don't know how! <laughs> You're doing it now. Why stop, man? This is our story, Synanon in Prison, as the Prudential Insurance Company of America presents the 20th Century. The first time Candy Latson saw the inside of a jail, he was 19 years old and hopelessly addicted to narcotics. Looking back, he describes himself then as a small-time criminal and a big-time dope fiend. Now 29, Latson hasn't taken so much as aspirin since joining Synanon six years ago. He is now a regular and welcome visitor at Nevada State Prison. He carries with him into these cell blocks an idea that crime, like dope, is an addiction, and that both are an addiction to stupidity. Synanon attacks stupidity with truth, truth spoken by men who know what it is to murder yourself with drugs, and crime. When Latson first visited here in 1962, he found suspicion and distrust. Candy Latson. We had heard that some of the guys had threatened to riot and send word through the grapevine to me, you know, what they thought of me, and, you know, why don't I go to Birmingham and, you know, help, you know, the sit-inners or the stand-inners and, and, you know, things like this. And, you know, but it's kind of like their problem. I had a, a job to do, so I went in to do my job. That job meant, first of all, to introduce to men in prison the Synanon method. Latson is on his way to a Synanon session what sociologists call a special kind of group psychotherapy, what Synanon calls a simple, direct way for making its members see the truth about themselves, each other, the world they live in. The meeting takes place deep within the original wall of the prison itself, a room called the cave. Less than a third of these men are here for taking drugs. Their number is filled by thieves, rapists, murderers. Nothing is planned. There are no rules, except against violence. There are no prison authorities present, not even a guard. Only the inmates and Synanon members from the outside. What is about to take place is what Synanon describes as a gut-level discussion. What Synanon calls, looking at it the way it is. If you got such a tough left hook, how come you got to use a pistol uh, Pistol with people out in the street. Because it's more convenient. It's more convenient. <laughs> you know what, man? It's more convenient. You got knocked out with one punch. Can all, does that answer your question? Go ahead, <laughs> Not hardly. <laughs> hey, oh, hey, hey if I didn't know you, I would say that you were the next thing to Sonny Liston. You know, the way you talk and carry on, you know. <laughs> hey, look at how, many, how many fights do you have? Sonny Liston. Anywhere. I've had quite a few. You had none. You've had none. You're You've had two fights here in this joint. And they're phony. Yeah, in the, in the ring. And you two got nine fights. Out. You know nothing about no physical fitness. You got some little punk up there. You're just grabbing onto what he says. You said you know, that every, the things that you do kind of point out to you that you're a psychopath. I've been under right. the influence of alcohol or narcotics, you know. But wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. That's why it's real legal. Wait, 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 put me in predicaments where I come to jail. You weren't under the influence when you built it, what you call it up on a tear. Well, you know, that was a different thing. Why was it? Hey, look here. Well, 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 since you're aware that you had I stopped. stopped. You know, if I hadn't been under the influence, if I had been under the influence, I wouldn't have, you know. Hey, hey and look at so this. what? Look at this. Well, why? Well, you know, I haven't uh, really uh, found out why yet. You know, except the... Uh, Pushed my butt. No, that ain't the reason. Why don't you look at it the way it is? And you had a setup. That's the way. That's that's how. Why you hooked him? You had a setup. You had a push, push over. 
Look at this, Don. You knew you could take him. You hit a sissy. That's all you hit. Sissy run his mouth, too, you know. I'm not particularly... Everybody else in there was running their mouth. Why didn't you have one they of those dumb, guys? You know, they oh, dumb. Yeah, they yeah, dumb. Who else? Well, everybody's got a dummy who who keep getting cell? hit in the head. Uh, the Synanon session has been called an emotional battlefield. What these men are attacking is destructive behavior and self-delusion. But what you are hearing is not aimless anger or senseless hostility. One premise of Synanon is that you attack what a man is doing, not what he is. What prevails in the end is reason. Okay, okay let's go. <laughs> let's forget about that. Let's go. This is how right. that happened. Right. This is how that came down. Right, you know. right. I agree with you. Let's forget about that. Let me say this. Now, I've been knowing you for over a year. I have never, since I've known you, uh, known you to be what you say you were, a psychopath. I've never known. Well, this is what, uh, what, what has been told me. Yeah, about but you're repeating it. Of that I, can only, that I, can only believe, think, I can only believe what you tell me because you have no reason to lie. So I can't believe what you say. You, said, you know more about you than I do. I'm qualified to say this. You know, I'm not qualified, but I'm going by here. But you said, it. okay, okay. So somebody said you're a psychopath, so you like to go around calling yourself psychopath. So I guess whatever psychopath is, you act like a psychopath long enough, you become a psychopath, right? Yeah, that's possible. Okay, Name. crazy. Now, Paul, I just told you something about uh, this illusion that you're under of being, you know, the heavyweight champion of the whatever it is. You know, no, I'm not under an illusion. Wait a minute. I know, I know what I'm But you are. But you are. That's now, you, haven't, you really know nothing about fighting. You haven't really had that many fights. You've had a couple of fights in a ring with a couple of kids that you sent up to the gym, and they couldn't go over three rounds. Neither could you. You know, you probably won two or two fights out of uh, at the most. You know, but, 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 but some kind of way you walk around with this image uh, with your chest back and, you know, swag shoulders and, you know, uh, I'll hook him like this, I'll hook him like that. And, you know, for uh, what? Yeah, I'm thinking, hey, 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 you know what, you know what? You know what? After about seven months in the sun on, you relaxed for about two months. And you was the most pleasant guy that was around here. You were, everybody was going to you. You did a complete flip. And everything, you had something to talk about that was valid. People were, even the guys in the cinema, and you were moving. You was in this direction. You was moving out and up. You know what I mean? You was going up in status, right? You come all the way from the bottom. You started moving up, right? My line, so far. This is true? Oh, you're you right. You was going up, and you was going out. Now, for some kind of way, you didn't reach a standstill, and you're going back. This is what, this is all I'm saying. So what is happening to you? I don't care about if you go up to the gym to box, or if you want to fly around an airplane or jump over the fence, or, or, or you know, pick all these balls up in this damn thing with these lines. It doesn't make no difference to me. You know, I'm in bed. I, I need some physical fitness, too. I ain't got my arm. Look how big my ain't no bigger than that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about what's happening to you. CBS News correspondent Charles Corral first went to Nevada two years ago and spoke with Candy Latson. Well, these things that you discuss in the prison, aren't really the kind of things inmates usually talk about, are they? How do you get through to them? How do you make them talk about things they never talked about before? Most guys in prison, they kind of got an image, you know, um, that you talk about things uh, that, are, that represent status in the criminal world. That is, uh, who pulled the biggest score, uh, you know, what happened that you got busted, you know, uh, the getaway car wasn't uh, fast enough, uh, left it in turn at the right corner, you know, where he should have turned at, he went around through an alley and somebody got the license plate, this sort of a thing. And, uh, you know, I've done time, a couple of times, and uh, I've been arrested about 30 times, and uh, they know me and I know them. The same little you know, walk and talk that they do in jail was the same walk and talk I did while I was in jail. And um, we relate more as human beings. Like, I don't have no doctor's degrees. You know, I got a seventh grade education. My O's are not rounded. My English is not perfect. And uh, for words that I can't articulate, I can use a slang word and, you know, they'll know what I'm talking about. And it's a we and they situation. You know, I'm one of them and, and, and they're one of me. You know, and uh, this is the way that we get through to each other. Some of the games, the little games that they try to get over on me, you know, I invented some of them, you know, and, and, and some of them I've used myself to try to put over on people. You know, I used to put them over on my grandfather, who's a minister, and I used to put them over on, you know, the man at the corner grocery store. And when, when they come up to me with it, it's like, you know, hearing myself all over again. It wasn't for the sake of just gambling. I just had a dime walk, back, walk by the blackjack table, dropped it on, and 
lost and walked on. That's all. Certainly. What are you going to do down there when they tell you this is Well, that's how it'll be, you know. Oh, but you know what you do? You just happen to pass by a liquor store and just happen to have a dollar, just happen to sit a half a pint, and just happen to take one little drink and just get drunk and go ahead on. That's the way it'll be. And see, all these little things lead up to something else, man. That's you, true, you but... Uh, yeah, you see, you keep saying, here, but, uh... Yeah, it ain't got nothing to do with it, but, uh, it's what you did. Yeah. Art Whitehead broke the Synanon rule against gambling. He was serving the final weeks of a seven-year sentence, after which he planned to live at Synanon House in Santa Monica, California. Even so, he is placed on the hot seat, subjected to the group's relentless cross-examination, to make him aware of what he is doing when he bets so much as a dime in a prison blackjack game, and even why he is doing it. I'm doing hard time. Oh, well, I was doing extremely hard time yesterday. Why, what was on your mind? Getting out. What, what about it? What, what, what kind of thoughts come to your mind about getting out? Nothing to do. I try to read. You know, I go somewhere late out, try to read. There's a bunch of noise, you know? Uh -huh. So I pick up the book, go put it in my coat pocket, go back to the book and walk around and walk. So I just got tired and I wanted to sit down and get my mind away from the time. Is that how you're getting real short? Yes. Well, you said about getting out, having me make your mind what you're going to do when you get out? Really? What's the problem? It's not a problem of... What I'm going to do when I get out is simply that the last days are very long. That's all. That's when your problem starts when you get out. You got something else on your mind besides going to center on us? Hey, will you let me talk, man? Okay. Will you let me explain myself? You're afraid of going out, ain't you? Definitely not. What do you mean? What do you mean, no, definitely not? locked up for seven years. How can you, you step down that chair? Because days. I have a place to go. That's, That's why I'm make a damn bit of difference, man. Everybody's scared when they get out of prison. Are you kidding? You was playing Roy Rogers and Trigger when you come in this job. I may not, I may not know what it's like to live out there, but I know what it's like to live in here, and I don't like it. You can't, you, know. you can't stick a little gambling van. I'm not trying to keep it down there. Well, look, I will tell you something. I will tell you this, folks. You know, I will tell you this. You know, this gambling van that you have going here. Uh, with me, gambling is not compulsory. You know, I gamble if I want to. I don't gamble if I don't want yeah. to. You know. That's the same but, way uh, pickpocketing pick right. is with me. That's okay. not compulsory. If I just happen to see a wallet, I lift it. You know, but if I don't, right. I, won't, I won't bother. You know, same thing. Well, 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 you know what? You, uh, you guys are You see a defendant at that? Why can't you just admit crazy. that, you know, we put on a band for gambling and you violated the rule and made an ass out of yourself and went back and gambled? That's what no. you did. No. Well, wait, 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 what did you do? Did you I, I gambled fully knowing what I was doing, you know, and uh, it was just... What would you do with anybody in this group who, who were to gamble after we said no gambling? What, what would well, you, you do? Didn't, you what? didn't say no gambling. The court what do you mean we said, said no gambling? gambling? The court power up there said no. <laughs> oh, well, excuse me. You know, you're making a lot out of this guy and bet I made. Charles Hamer, for 37 years a drug addict, in and out of prison until he joined Synanon. Now he visits this prison and the cell block set aside for Synanon members. What is your feeling when you go out to the prison? You've seen the inside of some prisons yourself. Many of them. It's amazing to me how they operate this tier. The guards leave them completely alone. Their cells are open all night where they can go and converse with each other. And this is unheard of in a prison. And they just do constructive things, which is normally uh, completely alien to their nature. They uh, do their own discipline. Uh, their peer is the cleanest place in the whole institution. And instead of seeing the usual petty girl calendar or Playboy magazine, you see blackboards with philosophical and religious concepts. And these are discussed in new meetings. It leaves them very little time to sit around and discuss crime and how much dope they've shot and how many banks they've robbed and such as that. Jack Fogliani, a former sheriff and law enforcement officer for 30 years, the last seven as warden of the Nevada State Prison. Warden, wasn't this sticking your neck out a little bit? This kind of thing's never been done at any other prison. I felt that we had to try something new. If we're going to get out of the old thinking, the old custom, we had to try something new. I just took the chance. What kind of changes has Synanon made around here? We don't have the fights. We don't have the disturbance uh, we used to have. Uh, they take care of that themselves. 
uh, we don't have the uh, gripes and complaints that we usually have. Do you have any idea what it is that Senanon has? Uh, I think what they do, they just uh, get into this man and make him admit of all the things that he's been trying to hide. Uh, make him bring it out, and they discuss it, and they kick it around. And I think that's good for the individual. Uh, is, uh, unload this, get it out of his system. Um, start all over. Chuck Diederich, founder and guiding philosopher of Synanon. Never a dope addict, for 20 years, an alcoholic. Isn't it um, arrogant of Synanon to think it can succeed in a prison where orthodox organizations of long standing haven't really been able to make much difference? Uh, uh, I don't mind the uh, arrogance. Uh, uh, you know, two wives have called me arrogant. My mother called me arrogant. And uh, uh, maybe uh, arrogance is a mark of significance in Synanon. I feel we have a right to be arrogant. If, if, if that's the word, it's a good one. I think that, um, that people, uh, many people uh, who's, uh, uh, who are hired to find answers to social problems uh, feed and fatten on the problem rather than on the solution. We are not interested in the problem. We're interested in the solution. There's a tendency in, in modern thinking to deal with people as things. People are not things. There is uh, interaction on a purely human level that marks the difference between uh, what Synanon is doing and what other people are attempting to do. What Synanon is attempting to do is demonstrate, by its own example, that man can change. That a life free from crime is no more impossible than a life free from drugs. And that it is a better life. Synanon does have its critics. Some Nevada legislators have questioned the wisdom of its method. So have some psychiatrists and penologists. But Synanon has been at the prison more than three years and is still there. We recently returned to Nevada to find out what changes have taken place. This story in a moment. At Synanon House in Reno, Nevada, Charles Carrault recently revisited Candy Latson. We first uh, talked to you about Synanon a couple of years ago. Let's take... Uh, uh, some of the Senanon members you've worked with. What about Al Hines? Well, when I met Al at the prison about three years ago, he was very uh, cut off from everything. You couldn't trigger him, nothing bothered him. He never showed any anger or any joy. He was just, just kind of like there. Hey, hey, hey Hines, what about you? Did, did, you, did you, think, you say nothing? Didn't he maneuver you into a spot where you had to uh, either pass it off as a joke or do something about it? You might have thought so. I didn't. Say, Al, do you, uh, do you, how do you feel now in these synonyms when they get loud? Do you still, uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, cringe? You know, you, you're... <coughs> when they get loud, I get quiet. And when they get quiet, you, you get, get quieter. Quiet. <coughs> well, what, 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 what happened to you? I visited him recently over at his shop. He opened up an art shop here in Reno after he got out of prison. And uh, he's married now and to a, you know, a nice girl, and he has a kid, and he's in business for himself, and he's happy, you know, and he's, 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 uh, he's, uh, he's much more outgoing, and, uh, you know, he seems to be using his talent now, you know, to father himself instead of, you know, letting it drag him down. Well, what uh, difference did Synanon make in your life in the prison? Well, it... it uh got me out of uh, the idea that I had to be a convict and started me thinking in the direction of living like a human being and trying to do something with my life instead of uh, playing the role of the convict. I think my big problem was that I no longer cared uh, what happened to me. I think this is probably the biggest problem with most of the people in prison. It isn't that they're tough or bad or that they have a uh, it isn't the money involved in their crimes. It's, they get to the point that they just don't care about themselves. And uh, I'm sure this is the point that I'd reached. And I'm sure that uh, through Synanon, I have begun to care about myself again. What about Whitehead? Well, I haven't seen Whitehead that much. I've heard from him. And 
When I first met Whitehead, I remember it was back in maximum security. He was back there for fighting all the time. And he was telling me that some guy that day had taken a bucket of urine and threw on him. And, uh, you know, Sinanon said don't fight, but he wasn't going to let nobody throw no urine on him. He's going to, you know, beat this guy up. So, you know, we kind of like talked to him. I told him, well, you know, it's too late now. I got him throw the urine on you, so, uh, so what? You know? So, the last time I seen Whitehead, which was about seven, eight months ago, he's married now and working in Los Angeles, and he's doing great. And I think this boy's been going to prison ever since he was 12. He started going to reform schools. He was in prison six years straight, you know, from the time he was 16 till he was 22. And he's been out of prison almost two years now, and he's doing great. Did you ever understand the importance of, uh, of not betting a dime? What was that all yeah, about? That was, uh, uh, at the time, I couldn't see it for the life of me, you know. Uh, it was just something that, uh, that, that I did and, you know, forget it. But it, it had, the thing that Candy Latson kept trying to point out to me, uh, it, it, I finally got around to seeing that uh, it, he was right. You know, uh, you, don't, uh, you don't renege on yourself. You don't go back, uh, it, like, it's like lying to yourself. Tell me a little something about the change in Whitehead's personality. Did you detect any? Uh, only thing I detected about Whitehead uh, is that he don't lie as much. He's still alive, but not as much, you know. But other than that, uh, he's fat and middling. Something must have happened, though. He's not in prison. Well, but that's, you see, we go on this premise. It's no big thing because you don't shoot dope no more. I mean, there are millions of people in the world who don't shoot dope. So just because a guy don't go to prison, it's no big thing. I mean, there are people all over America who don't go to prison. So, uh, so he's not going to prison. All right, well, great. But it's no, I mean, I'm not that impressed by him not going to prison. I don't shoot dope anymore. But I don't think that people should stand up and applaud because I don't anymore. But it exists. And you have to face it. Just like your life exists. You've been to the third tank three times. This is real. You have to face this. Regardless of what mama's going to think or what the brother at General Electric or, or, or DuPont thinks, so what? What's that got to do with you? You're walking around killing yourself because of what somebody else thinks. You, you got part of your feelings out now. You ought to, you know, get the rest of them out. And, you know, if it comes out in a blur or, you know, words or scream, whatever, you ought to tell the man about it. This is the maximum security section of the prison. Here are men confined not only physically, but emotionally. Men whose every instinct is to express walled up feelings and violence. What Sinanon must do is get these men to talk, to act out their problems with words before their hostility leads to violence. If you don't get it out this way, you'll end up in Triple B or wherever, or you know, uh, you'll take it out on the guard or the captain or somebody else, you know. Uh, like the other nut did and throw the coffee on the guard and all the time it's all good the one that's you know causing you all this kind of nonsense in your gut see that's the trouble you get started you, you get started doing something and then you, you quit you don't you don't go oh, on you shut up well tell him to shut up what do you mean why don't you tell him to shut up Man, we're gonna sit here and waste oh, all this time on you, man. Oh, you got to say to get you try and get you to tell this deep about how you feel about it. And you sit there throwing your head down like some little old funny broad or something, or twiddling your fingernail. The hell am I with you? Don't you speak up and tell a man how you feel about it? Synanon as a word has no meaning. It was the slurred attempt of a dope addict trying to say seminar. But its meaning may lie somewhere in this room. Perhaps in the minds of these men, seeking for the first time to communicate with something other than a gun or the point of a needle, or in the challenge it presents to our every assumption about criminal behavior and life in prison. And finally, in the hope it may offer for the rehabilitation of men's society as long accepted as its incurable enemies. <laughs> Next week, the story of a dedicated American, a woman who runs a hospital surrounded by a war. Her patients are the Montagnards, the restless mountain people of Vietnam. Next week, the story of Dr. Pat Smith, the woman doctor in Vietnam.
on the 20th century.